Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JD Traders Tea Time with me, that is Charles, because today is the 2nd of June 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Tuesday's uh, afternoon session, afternoon recorded session, of course, unfortunately for now. Um, but yeah, as always, guys, uh, we'll have a look at different charts, uh, different setups. Uh, we'll have a look at some of the instruments that we looked at this morning just to see how everything's kind of getting along. And uh, yep. Before we do that, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, also just before we jump in into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD, JFD research page which we also update on a daily basis so you can find it here if you click on JFD on research and I'll take you to uh, this page, like I said, which we update on on a daily basis. So feel free to kind of uh, check us out here on jfdbank.com. Um, so uh, now then, quick update on what's happening here globally. So as you can see, the yeah the number continues to rise. Um, so let's of course see how the number this number will look tomorrow morning. But for now, uh, for now, yes, uh, the number is slowly growing. Um, so yep, as I've mentioned this morning, it's going to be quite interesting to see if it actually uh, reach seven million by the end of this week. But again, uh, hopefully not. But uh, yeah, with the pace that it's, uh, it's going right now, I mean, it's quite possible. Um, right, now then, jumping into the charts. Now, the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. As you can see, uh, this is what I talked about this morning. This morning, I was telling you guys to, that, uh, first of all, we'll have a nice opening gap here to the upside where the index will be placed above these two uh, resistance areas near the uh, 11,770 and the 11,845. Um, the index continues to rise and it's currently balancing slightly above that psychological 12,000 12, mark. So um, of course what I've mentioned this morning as well was that our main target for now will be this 12,273 zone which is the highest point of March. Now it would be quite interesting to see if the index uh, can reach this area. That's going to be our main target for now. We're not going to target anything higher. We want to see how it's going to behave near this area. Um, and in general, first of all, of course, the question is, can it go up until this area? But it's not not far, so most likely there is a, uh, well, not most likely, but there is a possibility for this one to drift uh, towards this 12,273 zone, so which is the highest point of March. So let's see uh, how this plays out here. In terms of the downside here on this one, we would need to see a drop back below the 11,233. 35, 36 zone here, and then we could consider uh, lower levels until then. Uh, the downside is slightly off the table unless it's a temporary correction. Uh, now jumping into NASDAQ 100, now I looked at this one as well uh, yesterday and basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this uh, this rising veg pattern, uh, which as you can see for now is working out perfectly. So the um, the the index is climbing higher, and uh, if uh, you can see that yesterday, for example, it closed in the slightly in the positive territory. Um, but if we have a look at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is currently balancing near the 9,627 zone, so basically just slightly above where it closed yesterday. And uh, yep, that's going to be quite interesting to see if we can actually eventually reach this all time high on NASDAQ 100 near the 9,737 territory, roughly around there. There. That's the that's the level that was reached here in mid-February. Um, so we're not far from that. And look how far, how 
quickly we managed to recover all this all this drop that we saw here in the end of February and the beginning of March um, and from where it, it, we can say that it was a it, it, it seemed that there was no kind of way that this could recover all this but as you can see yep this is what happened here and the index continues to drift higher for now we will still remain somewhat positive as I said we are targeting the the all-time high near the 9737 zone and then we will take it from there because what we are we're not excluding here and as you can see by the chart here is a rising wedge and according to it TA rules these tend to break to the downside so that's why for now guys um, well like I said, we will keep an eye on this. Uh, we'll keep in mind this uh, the scenario where it could drop lower. However, in order to aim for lower levels, uh, we will uh, wait for a violation of this uh, of this lower side of the rising wedge. And ideally, we would like to see not only a violation but also a daily close outside of this uh, outside of this pattern. Uh, because as you can see here on the 27th of May, we had a a break below this um, this lower side of the veg and uh, yep uh, the uh, the in the index then kind of reversed uh, sharply to the upside and traveled higher again so that's why for now we are leaning a little bit more to the upside um, but only up until the uh, the all-time high figure near the 9737 zone uh, Brent oil so uh, Brent oil uh, managed to reach uh, my target here and this morning I talked about Brent oil we were still hanging around here somewhere near the 90, uh, 38 38.30 zone somewhere at 38.50 area and uh, what I was saying that keep your eyes on the 100 day EMA here and and the this level here the 39.60 zone which could kind of uh, provide resistance good resistance uh, for this commodity and uh, for now it's it's doing exactly that so of course don't get me wrong we still have uh, a few uh, well uh, the whole US session to go through so uh, let's see what what's gonna happen here but to be honest if this continues to struggle to overcome the the 100 day EMA or the uh, this 39.60 zone then well this could play out nicely uh, as the the arrow here is is drawn and uh, it could we could see maybe a drift back down a little bit a uh, small correction basically and if this area here the 36.10 territory provides decent support then we could see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside however for now uh, let's take it from the short term perspective and uh, yep keep your eyes on this level right here because if we struggle to see a, uh, a nice daily close above this area above the 39.60 zone then well uh, the downside scenario could be uh, back on the table and uh, for now of course uh, from at this point in time the uh, the downside scenario is the um, could be seen as a, as, a, as a temporary correction so basically the the downside scenario here would be um, a temporary correction before another leg of buying because for us to get excited about much much lower levels we would like to see a drop back below the 32.21 zone here marked by the high of the 6th of May uh, Bitcoin so Bitcoin managed to pop finally and uh, this is what I talked about recently especially last week when I was covering Bitcoin uh, the crypto uh, first of all rebounded from this uh, this upside support line taken from the low of the 16th of March and most importantly it managed to close above this downside line taken from the highest point of December 2017 and this is what I talked about previously guys that if we get a nice daily close above this then this increases the chances for a further move north now um, of course, looking at, at today's trading, we are seeing a bit of a decline here. However, this decline is a little correction because, as you can see, it's struggling to get back below this downside line. So, for now, we will class this as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. Oh, sorry, a leg of buying. Um, and, uh, yep, we could start aiming for much higher levels, like, for example, the uh, the highest point of February 2020. Um, and, uh, yep, or in other words, that's the uh, the highest point of um, the highest point of this year uh, near the 10,491 zone and a break above this this yes of course would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep more buyers could be joining in here but for now it still is uh, looking looking quite positive here especially the fact that the price continues to balance above this uh, 10,000 
10,045 zone. So in, or in other words, uh, it's con it continues to balance above the psychological 10,000 zone. So if it can, can continues to do that, then yes, there is a, a bigger uh, chance for this one to drift higher. For us to maybe start looking at some lower levels, we would probably wait for a drop below this area, which I've previously looked at as a resistance. Now it could take the role of support. And that level is roughly near the 9,300 zone. So if a drop back below this, could yep open the door towards uh, slightly lower levels but for now uh, we are leaning a little bit more to the upside we are aiming for the highest point of um, of this year and so far uh, the the high, so far the highest point of this year near the 10491 zone now a quick update on ADGPY i talked about this pair and uh, basically uh, what I was saying that uh, I talked about this pair yesterday and was what I was saying that uh, this is the level that we're going to be aiming for the uh, the 74.47 zone and as you can see we have managed to almost almost touch that area but to be honest we will take this already so this uh, this has been a perfect move here uh, where this barrier here the 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 high of the 19th of February managed was was got tested um, and uh, or in other words, that's actually the highest point of February as well. So, um, so we this is where the kind of the holdup could occur. And uh, in a way, uh, if the bulls, for example, struggle to push uh, this pair further north above this area, then well, maybe we could see something like this, where we could see a bit of a correction here uh, to the downside before another leg of buying. So if let's say if this uh, area here, the 74.47 provides decent resistance for now. We could see a bit of a uh, correction here, maybe back down towards this area, towards the uh, the low of the second, uh, 3rd of February, sorry, uh, near the 72.4142 zone. And around here, uh, the rate could also test the 200 day EMA. So yep, keep your eyes on that one. Uh, could be quite interesting. Um, however, if we uh, see this pair pushing further north above this above this barrier above the 74.47 zone well again of course this increases the chances of a potential further move uh, higher however don't get me wrong uh, we could be a little bit overstretched here, maybe even on the uh, on the even on the daily chart. So maybe a small correction could be possible. However, as, uh, do not exclude a possibility still to move further north. Overall, yes, we will continue targeting higher levels. Like for example, this this area right here, the highest point of December near the 76.55 level. Uh, that could be a very nice target to consider so uh but uh as i said for now for now all eyes are on this 74.47 zone because if it provides decent resistance we may get something like this where we could see maybe a small correction a small setback back down uh, don't forget that <clears throat> the pair is still balancing above this upside support line taken from the low of the 2nd of April. So in a way, anything kind of any retracement back down here uh, could still see, be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. In terms of the downside, we need to see a drop below the 70.17 area and only then we will aim for lower levels. Quick update on USDJPY. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but just basically this morning I talked about this one and I uh, was telling you guys to wait for a uh, breakthrough one of these levels here, the either the uh, 107.33 territory on the downside or the 108.08 level on the upside. And as you can see, we're now pushing nicely above this upper side of the range and uh, yep, the pair is forming a higher high. Um, let's see if the pair can stay, if this daily candle can stay above this area, above this 108.08 level, because if it fails to do so, then maybe the, it, not everything is that good in the, um, in the bull block. Um, but if it does remain above this area or even better, it stays above the 200 day EMA, then well, the next target, as I've mentioned before, the, it's the 109.38 zone, and then we'll take it from there. A uh, quick update on USD CAD. Now this one continues to slide um, and as you can see that USD JPY is pushing higher it's mainly due to the uh, Japanese yen weakness and uh, here the Canadian dollar is strengthening uh, due to the uh, strengthening oil market so 
Uh, yep, that's the effect that we're having here. And as you can see, the uh, US dollar against the Canadian dollar is drifting lower. It First of all, it reached our target near the 200-day EMA. And uh, to be honest, it even overshot it. And uh, um, what I was saying uh, this week and uh, in the uh, yesterday and uh, last week, that our main target for now will be this 1.3465 zone, which, is mar which marks the high of the 28th of February. So as you can see today, we've managed to almost reach that area and then yep the pair rebounded slightly so in a way there is a possibility maybe to see um, this pair drifting lower uh, testing this area and maybe actually rebounding back up here from this level but so for now we will consider this scenario um, especially if like I said if it continues to trade below this 200 day EMA so we could see uh, the the pair drifting lower and uh, maybe testing like I said this 1.3465 zone so we'll keep an eye on that one um, in terms of the upside well it's uh, it's a little bit of a tricky one right, right now with the upside so it's main, the main scenario right now is to the downside guys so be very careful um, GBPUSD so this one is pushing higher so, so fantastic movement here for GBPUSD however uh, as I mentioned before that uh, when I was recovering GBPUSD that yes if it breaks above the mm, the 1.2296 zone yes it could travel higher and, and uh, as you can see it reached one of our uh, one of my levels here the 1.2467 it overshot it and uh, yep continues to climb higher towards this 1.2650 zone which as i've mentioned before will be our next target so um, but of course to get a little bit more excited about uh, higher levels let's say in, in the near term yes preferably we would like to see a daily close above this 1.2650 zone however uh, don't get me wrong we already in the past few days we already had a decent uh, rally here so um, in a way if the this pair drifts higher tests the 1.2650 zone but fails to overcome it then uh yep we may see a bit of a correction here to the downside um and uh yep we'll keep an eye on the 1.2467 zone here because it may provide decent support as it also coincides with the 100 day ema so keep your eyes on that one and uh yep and then of course if it overcomes the 1.2650 zone then yep uh, higher levels could be met here and uh, we could uh, start aiming for the um, the peak of march here near the 1.32 zone so but again that's something for a little bit later um euro chf quick update this is what i talked about this morning and uh, basically for now it seems that uh that um the pair will probably stay above this downside line and will probably close the daily candle if so then yep this kind of leads to a change in trend and uh, well euros hf chf could start moving higher again if you remember a few weeks ago i mean i was i was talking about this pair and uh, i was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this area and this key area of support um around the 1.05 zone from which as you can see it comfortably rebounded and pushed towards this towards this downside line so this kind of scenario worked out perfectly and uh for now um of course for now the uh the big question here is can this um continue pushing further north for now basically if it stays above this downside line then yes we will aim for higher levels uh, especially even if it if it, if it overcomes the 200 day ema here so something to consider something to keep in mind and of course if you're looking for the next potential level the lowest the lowest point of september could be a nice target here near the 1.08 uh, 12 zone here or we could even start aiming for the the lowest point of November 2019, which is roughly around the 1.0863 zone. So these two levels, yep, keep your eyes on those for now. Um, EuroCAD. Now, this one's quite interesting. Of course, similar story as with the um, with the. Um, US, US dollar against the Canadian dollar but um, yeah as you can see it's yeah it drifted lower for example yesterday however today it moved further down but found very good support near this 1.5054 uh, 
1.5054 level which is the lowest point of April and as you can see um, this area continues to provide decent support so in a way we cannot really do anything until we see a drop below this and below this area below the 1.5054 if we do see a drop below that then yes the next target for us could be around the uh, the 200 day EMA marked near the 1.4978 zone so uh, keep your eyes on this one um, if, of course, if uh, this this area uh, fails to provide decent support, this area around the 200 day EMA, then the up, up further declines are possible. And uh, yep, we will aim for uh, for the 1.4794 zone here. But again, let's not get ahead of ourselves too much. First, uh, let's see how this level here will perform, the 1.5054, because if it uh, provides a decent support then uh, then yep uh, we could see a nice rebound and a push back up however if it fails to do so then yep further de uh, further declines are possible uh, in terms of the upside here I mean you could wait for a push above the 1.5386 zone and then aim for higher levels because don't forget that we are uh, below some of these downside lines here that are a bit tricky and could be a little bit tricky and that's why um, even if we see a rebound here uh, back to the upside still the pair would be below this downside line taken from the high of the 31st of March and uh, that's why we would need to wait for a break of this downside line in order to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels and finally Euro uh, Euro USD so this one pushed finally pushed above the 1.1147 zone this is the scenario that I was talking about this morning but the scenario was mainly because uh, if the if this barrier would continue to provide resistance but as you can see it failed to do so um, and we managed to see a break above it however as you can see now the bears are trying desperately to to push the pair back down now if by any chance they managed to close the daily candle here below this area below this 1.1147 then well maybe this scenario could come in play and could come in handy so that's why be very careful here guys for now yes keep your eyes on the uh, on, on higher levels of course our main target for now is the 1.1237 zone marked by the high of the 16th of March but uh, given the the kind of the given the that the, the pair is slightly overstretched here to the upside even on the daily chart we could maybe see a, a small correction however as I said the correction could come if the daily candle stays um, below this area below the 1.1147 if it stays above it then well we will continue targeting this 1.1237 zone so keep your eyes on that one guys and in terms of the downside let's say larger extensions to the downside a drop below the 1.0990 level would be required so guys, I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. If you want to join me, or should I say, if you want to catch my video, my tomorrow's video, uh, my Traders Espresso, as always, 6 o'clock GMT time, we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and uh, yep, we'll take it from there. But guys, I hope, like I said, I hope you found it useful. And uh, once again, thank you very much for your, uh, for your likes and your views and uh, for your support, guys. So yeah, I really appreciate that. So have a wonderful evening, everyone, and I'll catch you tomorrow morning at my Traders Espresso, uh, 6 o'clock GMT time. Thank you very much and bye-bye.